Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. I'm Sports Fanatic News, Joe Boric, and this is going to be the first of our NHL playoff series recaps as the Colorado Avalanche. Congratulations to Avalanche fans. Complete the series sweep over the St. Louis Blues, led by a great series by their captain and, of course, Nathan McKinnon, who is just a beast in this league and obviously one of the top three players in the league and Miko Ratanen as well who had seven points that first line absolutely took it to the St. Louis Blues eight points for Landis Cog nine for McKinnon seven for Miko Ratanen uh, they just absolutely torched them Ryan Graves brought his physicality and also awesome slap shot to be able to contribute to Alex Newhook's goal in game two when he shot it on the ice that's hard to do but it's the perfect shot for the goal if you can shoot it fast on the ice for the goalie to give up a rebound. That's the hardest shot for the goalie to be able to grasp. If you can shoot it on the ice, he saw Newhook coming. That was a very smart play by Graves there to be able to get it to him. And that was really Colorado this whole series. In game one, they came in and just absolutely torched them 50 shots to 23. Quite honestly, the only reason that game won was a 4-1 to one game and nothing more was because Jordan Bennington actually played a very good game and realistically did not play a bad series. It's just the Blues had no answer for that first line and they had no answer for the physicality coming off from Colorado. Whenever they brought physical, they would out-hit them per periods, but whenever Colorado got physical and just kept bringing the ante on offense and they had that combination go in this series, the Blues had no answer for it because all they had was the physical play with no offense. So they really just didn't have an answer there, and that's what one of the biggest deciding factors were. But this series was just really no contest from the beginning. Colorado just kept bringing it to them. The Blues uh, kind of snuck their way into these playoffs, and it showed in this series. They're a good team on paper, but this year they were not performing due to some injuries and guys coming back midseason, they didn't have everybody, but they didn't perform up to full snuff of what they want to do. And Colorado is the President Trophy winner, the best team in the league. Uh, Gabriel Landeskog, the captain, is on his best team yet, and he's showing potentially his best play yet with 38 points in four games in the playoffs. And McKinnon, who always kills the playoffs, um, is already one of the best in hockey in the regular season. I would say he's probably the best in hockey in the postseason, has nine points in four games. So everything's going right for the Colorado Avalanche. In game two, that was a little bit more of an even tilt shot-wise, but then the aforementioned Nathan McKinnon just took it upon himself and got a hattie in that game, capping it off with an empty net Brett brought his team over, carried his team in that game, had a great game. Groovy played a solid game, gave up three goals, but played a solid game. And then Brandon Saad, who's a perfect mix-in uh, scorer that adds some jam to your team as a smaller guy, um, was able to get a goal there as well. The 6-1, 206-pounder Saad able to get the goal there as well. So nice for him, but that game was all Nathan McKinnon getting the hat trick and really carrying them there, and them just bringing the ante in that game as well. So I think that game showed the Avalanche really had the advantage in the series. And the game, which was game three, is really just what showed the there was no chance for the Blues in this series. Because the Blues actually, for part of game three, outplayed the Colorado Avalanche and actually outshot them 32-26. to 26. The problem is they just couldn't get anything going. The first period, they outplayed them. Nine shots to five. They also outhit them. Um, in the first period as well, so they've been so they actually did good in that game, but then they just couldn't get anything going whatsoever, and they just couldn't generate offense on nine shots, seventeen shots in the second to twelve, where that second period is actually where the Colorado Avalanche even on less shots, took advantage. That was when Ryan Graves was able to wire home a wrist shot of his own. Then Newhook on that aforementioned play that Graves shot it on the ice and was able to deflect to Newhook, got the goal, and Yost was able to score. The only good thing that came for the Blues in 17 shots was Tyler Bozak scoring. So this was really the game that just kind of showed me that this series has no chance the Blues have a chance to win it because they actually played pretty well in this game. This was their best game. And Colorado still figured out a way, even while play the Blues maybe actually at least played them even or outplayed them by a little smidge in that second still were able to get the better high percentage scoring chances compared to more shots and actually outscore them in that second period 
And that's what kind of sealed the deal there. You would obviously have Graves, I would say, would be the first star of that game. You would have to throw Newhook in there. And then you would give Gruby the star of the game for just having a good game and goal again, only allow one goal. And then yesterday, yesterday the Blues, um, the only reason this game was not as much of a spread was also because of, just like game one, Bennington made some bigger saves earlier in this game. Tarasenko was able to get the first goal, but then it was just all Colorado after that. Assad scored, Landis Cox scored again, the first line killing it as Rathenin scored. Tarasenko put up a fight in this game, though, so he's definitely a star of the last game of the series, being able to get two and actually show some fight in his skates, but then McKinnon was able to score again. So just like I said in the beginning of this video, the first line absolutely dominated them. The defense of Colorado, particularly Ryan Graves, really playing physical but good on offense, had a dominated series along with Cal McCarr, who's obviously just a menace back there in defense. Great defensively, great offensively. Had a great series, but they just came in, brought a lot of aggressiveness, brought a lot of pressure from the beginning, the Colorado Avalanche did, and the Blues had absolutely no answer. The only reason they did not get beat by more in some of these games, they could have lost some of these games 7-1, to one, honestly, rather than 4-1, to 5-1. Five to two with Tara Sagan to show up in that game. It could have been seven to two. Bennington played a solid series. The Blues just didn't play any good defense. But this series goes hats off to the Colorado Avalanche for playing a hell of a series. Hats off to that first line for having a great start. Hats off to the McCarr and Taze line for playing great. And then Ryan Graves for having a fantastic series last year's, not this year's, last year's plus minus leader coming in and having a fantastic series. And then that first line with McKinnon, Radden, and Landis Cog cannot be stopped. This Colorado Avalanche team is the best that Landis Cog has been on this far in his tenure at captain. And it's definitely showing. They already swept the Blues in four. It looks like they're going to play Vegas in the next series. We have to see. Please stay tuned for that series preview. As I do that, I hope you all enjoyed this series recap. Congratulations again to the Colorado Avalanche fan for completing the four game series sweep. Well, they just took it to the St. Louis Blues. And if it wasn't for Jordan Bennington, the Blues would have got beat by even more in those games. And in the last game, Vladdy Tarasenko. Those are the only good things you could really pull from that series. For the St. Louis Blues, for the Avalanche, you can pull all good things. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Please like, comment, and subscribe here at Sports Fanatic News. Stay safe, and also please like and subscribe at Steel Flyers as well. Peace out, everybody.